Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful autumn waterfall painting. It should be fun. And if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. And now I'm just finishing up, kind of putting down my ideas here on the canvas. Let me explain, you know, this is a little, a little weird. <laughs> this is kind of a helicopter view, a helicopter view of the waterfall. And we can get away with that only because of this land mass right here that I just finished sketching in. This will make it look like we're standing up actually over, you know, the height, over the level. And in order, we, I don't know, we might tweak that a little, but it'll look like we're standing kind of above that waterfall, like our head we can see on top. And that's very important that you do this. If you left this part of the painting out, then it really wouldn't look right. It would just, you'd never get it right. Just trust me on that one. So when you're doing these helicopter views, you're looking down on top, make sure you have some land mass. I think we talked about that in some tip video or something. I, I kind of remember, I kind of remember teaching you guys about that, but there's a quickie uh, reminder. <laughs> there we go. Let's get a little bit of our Prussian blue. There's no sky today and a little bit of black. So this will kind of be our, well, you know, we'll feel like we painted the sky. Okay, we're done. That was quick. Actually tell you what, we should just, I don't, I'm not a big fan of painting a waterfall with a two inch brush, but there you go. At least we got some color in. Let me grab that filbert. And I was just sketching with a little gray and brown and white. And I think I'm gonna just continue with those colors, mostly in the gray tones. A little blue is fine. And I'm gonna just start adding some to the water like this. Oh, by the way, I gotta mention, the reason my palette is dirty is because I've just been too busy recently and I accidentally left it. And I, every day I looked at it, okay, I'm gonna clean it. And it, here we are, time to make a video. And I didn't clean it. <laughs> so that's the reason, it, don't worry, it'll go back to normal in a, a couple weeks, I'm sure it'll. It's not the first time, probably not the last either. <laughs> there you go, it just happens. So don't feel bad. I know a lot of people stress out about cleaning their stuff off, you know, yeah, if something happens, the brushes are more important. The palette pretty much does its job, whether it's dirty or not. <laughs> the paint on there that you see is dry. Now we'll mix together a nice dark green color. All right, close enough. <laughs> Maybe put a little mud into it. And right back in here, I'm just gonna toss in just dark, really. Dark green, maybe a little blue, because you notice we're working in a lot of cool tones for a painting that I said was going to be autumn. <laughs> That's because I'm hoping, hoping, that the colors here, the blues and stuff, play really nice when we finally get to the warm colors. We'll see how it goes. I bet it works, because, because um, doing warm and cool colors together, contrasting colors, very, very pretty. So, yeah, that's a thought. <laughs> it doesn't work out. Who cares? There we go. All right, so now we kind of have some color. I'll work that up and we can pick out some highlights later. I don't want too much paint. Let me actually, we're already getting a lot of paint in that area. I'm getting a little overexcited with the colors, I guess. I'm just gonna take a paper towel and spread this paint probably twice as far as it is right now. And then I can put more on the canvas. This is the way that you make absolutely sure that you don't run into problems later. If you don't do this, I bet you run into problems, and I don't want that. I want you guys to have easy, fun success. Well, maybe not super easy. Gotta put a little effort into it. <laughs> there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just drop in some beautiful light here on the waterfall. I'm gonna do this pretty quick with the little three-quarter flat, and hopefully the whole painting looks a little better. I had to play around with the lights some. It's kind of a dark painting, and the lights were just reflecting terribly. I went back, oh, yikes, that didn't look good at all, so. We had to redo the lighting a little bit, so hopefully it's less shiny and you can see it better. <laughs> so if that's, uh, that's why it's looking a little better. That's, that's the reason. So when you're at home, it's very important to look at your lighting and see what you have going. and Make sure you can see what you're doing. Sometimes the wet paint reflects light in such a way that makes it look lighter than it is. Okay, anyway, let me get to actually what we're doing. A little bit of blue and white, and that's all I have mixed up over here. And we're just gonna carefully bring a little bit of this light into the painting. Maybe do this in two or three stages, maybe a little brighter at the top, a little softer at the bottom. Light touches, and we, it's okay if it mixes a little, <laughs> or a lot, right there. Oh, there we go, nice, with the, with the paint that we have down. We don't have much, and you can wipe it with a paper towel if anything ever becomes too muddy. Now I'm just finishing up here with the white, and I just did that with a detail round, because it's softer. It certainly layers a little better. All right, let's set that down, and I'm gonna blend it, but I'm gonna blend it with a fan brush. I know it's a little weird, but let me show you why. 
I'm thinking, here's, here's what I'm thinking. I think if we go flat on, for the most part, let's see if we can do that here. I'd like to bring it back using the fan because I'm gonna get lots and lots of little lines and I want this to look fairly close. So I think that this technique, let's do it right here, should be easier to see. I think that this technique will give us those little, little lines. Be nice and soft with it. Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, that looks really good. To kind of bounce it along, it gives you that nice little look there to it and blends it out just a little. And it creates maybe just one more layer of detail. If you go in like this though, I think it'll blend it too much. Like this, it's extremely soft and that's important. Now I've mixed together a quick light tan color. Maybe a little bit of yellow in there would be kind of fun. Okay, that just gives it a different feel. Now, right up in here, you see I threw in a couple of quick trees and now I'm going to go ahead and just indicate what's going to hopefully feel like a little bit of land back here. And I know that, there we go. I know that it's gonna be kind of tough to paint around the trees, so I'm not even gonna bother. So many times I like to put the trees in first and put the land in behind, just because it helps me kind of gauge how the land should flow around the trees. Because the land is kind of easy to manipulate, but the tree placement is generally in a painting more important. Our light's coming across like this. We need to make sure we get a nice bit of light back here. Again, this is kind of just like a cliff face, but we need to make sure it's right. If it's not right, the whole painting might not look might not look good because we gotta hold that waterfall back. And so now it's kind of our job to make it look correct. And we can hide any transition areas in between the waterfall and some of the foreground with leaves if it doesn't, you know, turn out just right. <laughs> Oops, you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> oh boy, that's okay. We like to do things, if there's an easy way to do it, it's generally fine. <laughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and brush in just a little, well, mostly tap, but I'm not just tapping in and out. I am going to kind of flick it here and there. It helps to mush the paint better into the canvas. Anyway, what I'm doing is I'm adding just a few leaves to this tree, and we may not add much of any highlight up here. Uh, this painting is very light in the middle, kind of dark on the outsides, and I'd like to keep it that way. I'm thinking just for a change, it'd be kind of fun to keep the corners extra dark. Still the, the middle nice and bright. Just a little extra dark on the corners. Let's see how it turns out. There, it's just fun. You can't do the same old thing over and over again. You might go crazy. This way, kind of, you have less of a chance of going crazy at least. You probably still will. <laughs> Too much fun though, isn't it? Just drop these right in. I'm leaving a lot of that background showing. That all also helps to look like little highlights. Now I'm putting some rusty red right over the green, the black and green that we just did. And look, I love the way that it just makes it so deep and vibrant. I love it. And yeah, it's still really, really dark and high contrast. And I just thought it'd be, you know, I saw the, the color over here and I kind of thought, well, we should probably sprinkle some autumn tones up and through here as well. And so I just put the, the rusty red right over the green. I love it. So this just goes to show you never stop figuring out new stuff. So don't be afraid to experiment. This is really cool with that kind of green undertone. It makes it look like the leaves are just changing and it's really deep in the shadows. I love that. Wanted to be sure that I showed you how to do that. That was really cool. So anyway, we all learned something today. I'm gonna just use this cool green to drop in our evergreen highlights. We don't need much, just a, a little bit here and there to make it feel like a forest. Just a, just a touch. <laughs> there we go. Doesn't take, doesn't take a whole lot of effort for these little guys back here. They're just not a, if somebody looks at the paint and says, oh, what pretty evergreens, you did something wrong. <laughs> That's what I always tell my students. So don't worry about it. Now I'm going to take some yellow and try to make this tree here look less impressionistic. You see, I just very quickly slapped some extra color. We already had some color there, but I put a little more color in to fill in that little uh, missing spot. But let me show you, I just want a nice bright, actually I want a really bright yellow. So let's do this, maybe just a touch of red into it. That's not bad. Lots of paint, you see that? Because this is the final highlight out here. We're not gonna do anything else. So you can get away with this thing being thick and gloppy. Oops, I actually said you can do it thick and gloppy. Yeah, we do that at the end of the painting. It's actually okay. There we go, you just touch it, leave some texture. People pay extra for that in an oil painting. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful, see how that works? And you just, you take the broad, messy colors 
and you just start pulling out these really pretty little leaves. Now, depending on how bright we, we go with this, then we can kind of look around and say, okay, now this needs to be brighter. Okay, this needs to be brighter. You know what I mean? So we'll kind of take this to the finish point and then I'll look around and just brighten anything if we need to. The main concern here though is bringing some sharp detail, leaving a little bit of the fuzziness from behind just to make it a contrasting tree, contrasting, um, you know, sharp and soft edges. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, that's kind of my idea for the tree. Hopefully it works out the way I'm picturing. I think it will. Again, I'm using a detail round because it's soft and it has a tendency to layer paint better. If your paint doesn't come off like mine, just take a paper towel and wipe this area down. You won't hurt it. You might make it a little softer, but that's all there is to it. Now we're going to go ahead and just drop on a quick highlight here to what's going to end up being cliffs in the foreground. These cliffs are extremely important to the painting. Without these, it just isn't going to look right, guarantee you. So make sure you kind of get these in pretty, pretty well, you know, figure out where you want them, drop them in. Not that it's not that it's hard or anything to figure it out. Just kind of double check that you like your cliffs and that they, they're doing their job right. Of course, their job is to create the proper perspective. Uh, there we go. That looks better. I'll play around with those. But that is a good start. And what you can do is take another light tone, just anything. I just picked up a little mud. And you just pull straight down like this. There's a rock there. So, yeah, there we go. Kind of hard to see right now. We'll pick it out with a brighter highlight. Maybe with the detail round or something. Actually, there you go. That helps. Kind of see it that way. Good. Very good. So you see these take a little bit of, you know, take a little bit of refinement. They don't happen just in two seconds. <laughs> Maybe just two minutes though. How's that? Not too bad. Maybe highlight our tree while we're at it as well. I think another fun detail right in here would be to just add in what feels like a little bush and I'm going to do it in the same style as that bush with the green with the tree, <laughs> the green and the reds together. What that's going to do is draw both sides of the painting together. You can't just have, you know, bright colors and dark. You got to bounce them around. I may brighten those up. I haven't, uh, I haven't decided. I'm just sitting here looking at them and this is a fun way to paint. You're not locked into your original ideas. Stuff changes as you paint. So you should be flexible. Because if you're flexible, you have more fun. Just, I guarantee it. <laughs> there you go. Now, one of the last things that we're going to do to this painting is pretty much with the liner brush. We may use the, we may use the detail round. I should say pretty much exclusively with. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, we're going to, we're going to drop in a lot of grass. And not just grass, but check it out. Little tree limbs. And honestly, just stuff to make this foreground come close. With a painting where there's no sky, this is really important. This is different than what we normally do and it takes just a little bit of a different approach and I love that. So I'm gonna spend, well, let's say maybe, phew, could be as much as five or 10 minutes or more. Just depends on how it goes. Sometimes it goes fast, sometimes it doesn't. Just doing, all over the painting, just doing different bits of detail with the liner brush. So we'll see. It should be pretty fun. Hopefully I don't go <laughs> too cross-eyed, but I'm going to stay mainly in the foreground with different colors. It's probably where the time is going to be spent changing to just different colors. That's the same idea. Once you guys have got the brush stroke down, it's you got the brush stroke. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can jump between your darks and your lights to get really cool effects like this. So anyway, this will help the foreground quite a bit. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.